thank you. This is a presentation about presentations. Because presentations are, in our culture, pretty important. When you think about it, in education, in academia, in business, everywhere people are presenting stuff. The problem is, many presentations are pretty boring, and what's even worse than sitting in a boring or in a bad presentation is having to give a presentation. Having to give a presentation for many people is really, really stressful. And that is what I would like to change. What I've brought to you today is my parents' slide projector's remote control. It's a pretty cool device. I used it as a child. It has well, one button for focus, because you can adjust the focus of the projector, and it has another red button for going forward in the slides and going backward in the slides. It was already old when I was young, so it's, it's kind of outdated, you would think. But if we take one step into the present and compare it to today's remote controls, it doesn't look much different. It's still going backward or going forward, and that's it. Well, the problem, I think, is that both these slide projections from the 1970s and today's PowerPoint presentations are based on the idea of sequences, of one slide da, 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 after the other and so on. Uh, it's, it's boring. And what's worse is that we humans don't think in sequences. We humans think in associations, you know. I have an idea, and oh, did you know that? And then somebody else has an idea. It's pretty chaotic, but that's the way we humans think in associations. The problem is, of course, when we try to squeeze this into, well, the standard format of a presentation, because then you have your slides set up already, and you have an idea in between, but you can't do that, because the slide that will be next is a different one. It doesn't fit, and that is stressful. So what can we do? Well, if we go back all the way back in time, using our flux capacitor to the ancient Greeks, what did they do? Well, they had some pretty good techniques to memorize and structure their speeches. For example, with objects. That is the Nemo technique. Or they used places in, let's say, a room that they knew, and they mentally walked through that room, and they structured the talk. They knew, okay, this is there, and that is there. The Loki technique. And I was recently coached by Ole Tillmann. He coaches people for the TEDx events. And he told me to do exactly that, because it's much easier if you memorize things by places and by objects and by emotions. The question is, of course, how can we put that into a presentation system? Luckily, we don't have to start from zero. If we look into the related work, there is some really cool projects in putting data into objects. Tiago Martins, for example, did a really cool project with a gauntlet, and he used that for storytelling. He would touch objects, and that would activate like a snippet of multimedia. And there's also cool projects on putting data into spaces and places. This project by Nina Valkanova and Robert Walter, that is about positioning yourself, literally, in front of a question. It's a huge wide projection and you find a spot in that. Where do you stand in relation to that question? And of course, there's also cool HCI projects on using both of our hands, not only one hand, to understand complex data. Like a 3D brain scan, as in this example, Ken Hinckley. He uses a puppet head and a section plane that you relate to each other and then you explore the data using both of your hands. So we humans just love to think with both hands. And of course, there's also HCI research on presentation systems. This, for example, Les Nelson, the Palette system. It is based on printed slides that have a little barcode and you hold the slide in front of a reader and it jumps to the slide. That's pretty cool. And what I want to do with this project is take all of this together a new presentation system based on using both of our hands and putting data into places and into objects. And what I did is this. So it's a, it's a wearable ring, one on each hand, actually. And with the ring, you touch an object, and because there's an RFID reader in the ring, the computer will know what you touched the tomato or the phone, for example. There's a tag inside, very simple. So in a live presentation, you would simply pick up a topic by picking up an object. 
So if you talk about the histories of food and of information, you start with food maybe, you just pick up the object. So this might help you to know what you're talking about. People like to have something in their hand. We used to connect for a gesture tracking. So if you hold up the object, you get a spotlight for it. And if you want to switch topics, maybe because it's the next thing you want to talk about, or if there's a question from the audience, you just switch the object. So this is now about information. And what you will see here is the comparison of the two histories of information and of food. We also track the speaker's position on stage so we can actually know where in the topic they are. And that kind of makes it possible to approach a topic, to go through it, and also to skip points. So here we see the speaker going, for example, through the history of information, you know, from the old paintings to the, the printing press. Uh, you go through a timeline literally by walking on stage. Newspaper age, it's mobile phone age, okay. And now she goes back and picks up the tomato and goes to the same timeline, but the perspective is now on food. So it starts with, you know, hunter-gatherers and so on. That's a parallel between food and information. Both used to be very scarce, were industrialized, and then came a fast food age. Maybe today we're in the fast food age of information consumption. And that's it. My question was, and that's why I tested it with users, does it make sense to use it in a real presentation? And I tried it with some people, and they liked some stuff about it. They liked it's dynamic, it's interactive, and they have their hands free, which is not really true because they have something in hand, but they don't use a clicker. And they could swap around the objects and improvise. That's what they liked. What they didn't like was that they were like glued to one position on stage and they weren't allowed to move and so on. So there were some ups and downs and also they asked, what if I have a really long presentation? Do I have to bring suitcases full of objects and like the table gets really full then? Well, I don't know. Um, yeah, as you see, I'm not wearing the ring and uh, there is no Kinect here. And that's because I changed the system a little bit because I want to use it myself. I replaced the Kinect with a distance sensor, which you see over there. And I also removed the rings, and I replaced them with a small podest, which you see over there. And it's very simple, the podest measures which objects are there, and if the one is missing, it assumes that I took it away, and I have it in my hand. And that's the project. And my question is, of course, what is on the horizon? What, what comes next when we take this and evolve it to here, and one step further even, what comes then? Because I think presentations are, for us, really important. They multiply our ideas and they help ideas spread from one person to many. And I think that is what our world needs, it's good ideas. Thank you very much.